Welcome back to Face the State on this Sunday morning. We are joined today by the Democratic candidate for governor, Ned Lamont. Mr. Lamont, I want to touch a little bit more on state workers. Do you think any, and I'm sure you've looked at the salaries and the budgets and all that, any salaries that are too high right now in state government? I think there's some pensions that are too high. These uh, $150,000, $250,000 pensions, um, those aren't pensions. Those are just deferred compensation. If you want to pay somebody, pay them up front, but don't ask the next generation to pay it for the next uh, 35 years. I think uh, the current round of uh, employees, they've given up a lot. It's called Tier 4, and I think they're uh, very competitive in terms of their salaries. Our problem is not with um, those current workers. Our problem is the fact that governors going back 30 years didn't put any money into the pension fund or in the health care. Now we have to uh, figure out how we pay for those folks who have retired or are about to retire. Let's talk a little bit about um, government waste. And you have said um, that th there is some waste that you can get rid of. Which examples would you use today of things you'd like to see get rid of? I think, of? Um, first of all, big picture, go where the money is. Willie Sutton, right? That's health care. That's shared services. That's pension. That's uh, moving more towards the not-for-profits if people retire in 2022 is a possibility. Those are the big savings over a period of time. If you wanted to know where specifically in our current administration you could do things, I would centralize purchasing. I would centralize IT rather than each and every commission having all those independent um, things. You know, then there are a lot of line items, the, the Griswold uh, shooting range. Um, there's a... Uh, even in uh, Madison, there's a hot dog stand they want to spend $8 million on. So there are a lot of line items you can do, but the real savings are going to be in those big structural reforms. That's how you're going to save money in the state long term. Do you see any departments that could be cut or combined or perhaps commissioners who could do double duty and run two of them? I think more importantly, what I want to see combined is in particular IT. I think information technology or computer services, that should be in the cloud. You don't need separate IT people spread across each and every one of those departments. I'd like to see more centralization of purchasing. I'd like to see the back office uh, combined in state government the same way I'd like to see the back office for each of our 169 towns, some sharing there. We have 169 towns, God bless them, but that doesn't mean we need 169 tax collectors or superintendents or deputy superintendents or police chiefs. There, I think you're going to see some real savings over a period of time. As you know, Republicans say that the Board of Regents is a waste of money. Is it? Uh, I think when it comes to the Board of Regents, I like to see local control of our community colleges and CSU. I'm a professor at Central Connecticut State. But again, when it comes to IT, when it comes to purchasing, when it comes to those back office functions, I like to see that centralized. How else would you save money in terms of uh, um, education in our state? Is it, you know, there are students who are very concerned that there'll be more cuts, whoever is the next governor. Uh, well, well, that's not coming from me. I mean, so if you, you, if you education if, at all. No, if you eliminate that income tax, you're going to take it right out. It's going to jack up property taxes and hit education. That's the exact wrong uh, way to go. Uh, but yeah, I would tell you that we're one of the very few states in the country, Dennis, where we have pay more administrators outside the classroom than teachers inside the classroom. That's because we have a lot of very small districts. So I'm going to do everything I can to give uh, towns incentives to maybe combine that high school for their next generation. I'll ask you a question I asked Mr. Stefanowski last week, and that's that, you know, that there is some concern from people at DCF that whoever is the next governor will, will slash that department. It's been troubled over the years. It's, it's you know, been in the headlines a lot for a lot of negative things. What can you say to the people, the most vulnerable in the state today, that perhaps you'll look out for them and perhaps any cuts won't affect them? Yeah, Department of Children and Families is a, a core function that the state does. I, um, I love the fact that we have um, a lot of those kids, and they're part of foster families. Uh, many years ago, uh, Annie and I and our kids, we used to um, sponsor a Christmas party for um, the DCF kids. And I love the fact that you see a family there. Uh, maybe the child would be black, Hispanic, white, and they all called each other brother and sister. So DCF provides an amazing important role for kids who otherwise don't have a family and otherwise don't have a role model. So we've got to be very careful when we talk about, I can pull $5 billion out of this budget tomorrow. You're impacting those kids at DCF. You ran against Governor Malloy in 2010, uh, almost beat him in the primaries. The, uh, the, uh, you know, the race showed you ahead, and then at the last moment, things turned. He ended up winning. 
so I'm sure you watched him as he governed the state last eight years saying, well, I wouldn't have done that or I would have done this differently. And you have said you would do some things differently. Which of Governor Malloy's policies or initiatives or programs would you get rid of if elected? Uh, look, I'm not getting rid of or policies change. and programs. I mean, I think he did good things on criminal justice reform. I think he uh, did good things on uh, gun control after um, Sandy Hook. I think his great failing was not dealing with the fiscal crisis up front early on in his administration. He did more than Rell and Rowland and a lot of his predecessors did, but he didn't do enough and he paid a consequence for that because we had this fiscal crisis hanging over the state for the next uh, seven years of his administration. That's something I've learned. I'm going to deal with that head on up front in that first year. And it's something I worry about with um, you know Oz and Bob because um, they're both talking about, hey, that first year, maybe I'll take money from the rainy day fund. Maybe I'll defer contributions to the pension fund, Dennis. Wrong. That's the exact type of kicking the can down the road that got us into this mess over the last 30 years. I'm going to deal with it up front. You'll be inheriting a 4.2, 4.6, depending on, on who you listen to, billion dollar budget deficit when you take over if you are elected. How much smaller will the deficit be a year after a governor, you know, Governor Lamont is in office? If I deal with the first year deficit of two, $2.4 billion, and I deal with that in a real way, not kicking it can, not taking money from the rainy day, then I don't have that two billion, two and a half billion dollar deficit in the second year of that biennial budget. So uh, my goal is to bring down health care costs, consolidate uh, services, consolidate back office, uh, hold the line um, on taxes, and get to an honestly balanced budget in that first year. Then I don't have a four point six billion dollar deficit over two years. I just have to deal with the two and a half in year one. More with Ned Lamont in just a moment. We welcome your comments right now. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook.